Thank you for watching this complete Chrome instructional video on a double arch dentate patient. This particular case involves a gentleman who has partial dentures on the upper and the lower, which makes it a little bit challenging for records, but we'll go through the, the process of discussing records and we'll go through some of the surgery. Don't have all the photos from the surgery, but most of our videos do involve the uh, the chrome surgical protocol which is uh, a repeat every time it's a very standard procedure so we're going to go through this case as an example of chrome uh, guided smile from very beginning smile images all the way through to the final restoration uh, including eye jig and printed try -in. so this particular patient uh, presents with upper and lower partial frames there are metal clasps um, on the patient's lower partial, uh, which will not pose a problem uh, because we use the casts for articulation, not the CT scan. So we don't really worry about scatter uh, with minor amounts of metal. So the records for this particular situation are um, a CBCT scan with the teeth out of occlusion. Uh, we do not need the partials in the mouth. So this patient will just send, um, will just be scanned with uh, upper and lower. Usually the, the scans involve the upper in one scan and then the lower in another. Most CT scan machines are not uh, large enough of an, a field of view for both arches at the same time. If they are, that's fine too. It'll also involve the usual photographs, full face, full smile, and then the three photographs retracted left, right, and center, which we will show you in just a second. The, uh, the, the casts will be sent over uh, first as a maxillary scan without the partial, a mandibular scan without the partial, and if possible, a bite. However, it's often the situation that if a patient has upper and lower partials, those partials are holding the bite open. And that is the case with this patient. So that means the, either the scans, either the, the digital impressions or the master cast with polyvinyl um, will have impressions without the appliance and then impressions with the appliance. We will use these impressions for articulation and we will use these impressions and models uh, for the planning and for uh, the pin guide. So the pin guide will seat in the mouth without the partials in place. Those are the records. Here are the photographs. Uh, what we want to see is retracted uh, straight on and you can see this is a very nice photograph from Dr. Quitmeyer. Uh, this is uh, you can see a nice full depth of view full field which is which is good for us for articulating the cases because we will pull these images up on screen and we will match them with the articulated cast that we have in front. So those are the three photos left, right, center, in occlusion, retracted, and then an optional picture um, would be with the partials out of the mouth if the patient's occlusion was the same with and without the partials. In other words, do the partials hold the bite open or not? And I believe in this case, the partials open the bite open a little bit. Once we receive all of the records, we digitize them and we pull them into the software into Blue Sky Plan and we make a pre-plan. Um, of course before the planning we ensure all the records are correct and we may have some back and forth with uh, with the doctor with you. Uh, may perhaps asking for more records or for bite confirmations that type of thing. Uh, but we ask that you please do not make a surgery date until we have all the records. Once we do the records go into the software pre-plan bone reduction. You can see here with the, this will be the lower. In this case, the lower was completed first, uh, but the red line is the bone reduction line. 
and the top line is the plane of occlusion. This is how we ensure that we have the prosthetic thickness for longevity. Um, we can turn off all the layers, turn off the bone. This particular case is going to have uh, six implants, all relatively straight, which can sometimes happen in the mandible, that they're all very parallel. It certainly makes restoring very simple if all the abutments are straight. So we will host an online meeting, 30 minutes usually per arch, and we will confirm uh, implant position of each site. Every site will do a 360 view of the implant. We'll make sure the implant's in the proper position and that the, the doctor is 100% satisfied with the plan. In this particular case, as mentioned before, the patient uh, received chrome on the mandibular first. And that was in uh, February of 19. And then a few months later, uh, the doctor came back with the second chrome arch on the maxilla. And what we did was uh, we designed the mandibular case to meet the existing maxillary occlusion. There was just, uh, just a couple teeth remaining in the mouth. Uh, and the partial. So we idealized the occlusion of the lower uh, and then adjusted the upper during surgery to make an ideal plane uh, for the future maxillary case. So a few months later, we received new records and we moved forward with uh, the maxillary case. So again, same thing, same planning implants, uh, bone reduction leveling, implant positions. This had a couple of angled implants, a little less bone to work with in, uh, in this particular arch. And then we have a few images of, of the surgery for the maxillary arch. So we have uh, you know, the usual routine. It's the pin guide. The pin guide delivers the fixation base the fixation base stays in the mouth during the entire surgery. The bone is reduced down to the level of the fixation base, usually with some ramping in the posterior. Uh, osteotomy guide is placed, seated, and, and all the sites are drilled, and the implants are placed. Here we are. And then the multi-unit abutments are seated using the carrier guide. The carrier guide is what holds onto the prosthetic and delivers the prosthetic. The doctor inserted all of the temporary cylinders and then looted the prosthetic to each of the temporary cylinders and then removed the prosthetic, put some healing caps on, sutured, and delivered. So that was the surgical protocol. Uh, for the upper and lower maxilla, this is a delayed case. Many of these cases uh, you know, occur in the same day, the upper and lower arch in the same day, but this one was delayed. I think that was a patient, uh, patient choice. And you can see in the form of the follow-up that there needs to be some aesthetic changes. Uh, the, the case is going just fine. You know, the implant's all integrated and uh, Nice solid prosthetic, however, a little bit gummy, gummy smile. So this will be fixed uh, during the during the restorative phase. Now the restorative phase is a unique process. Uh, this, uh, this particular doctor, Quitmeyer, opts for the iJig protocol, and in the iJig protocol, uh, the doctor removes the long-term prosthetic from the mouth and adds the iJig scan analogs to the prosthetic. The iJig is a proprietary system uh, for Row Dental Laboratory and Chrome Guided Smile, but essentially the doctor removes both prosthetics from the mouth, uh, screws down our iJig scan analogs to each site, upper and lower. So in this case, uh, you can scan the upper remove the IG scan analogs and screw them in the mandib mandibular arch and digitize both arches completely, 360 degrees of the arch and the scan bodies. And then the 
the prosthetics go back into the mouth and they are screwed down and that is when the bite's captured. And those are the iJig scans. Now, this is the iJig 5.0. Uh, <clears throat> 4.0, you would have stopped at just these scans. 5.0, you also scan the ridges. So we want the scans of the ridges of the tissue and multi-unit abutments only. No scan bodies, no abutments, no prosthetic. Just a tissue scan, upper and lower. If you're a CIRAC user, a prime scan user, there is a method that you can see on our Facebook page that Dr. Taran Agarwal has uh, developed uh, where you scan uh, the prosthetics also in the mouth which is a very uh, a very handy way to do it but it really just works with the prime scan right now so once the scans are uploaded and sent to the laboratory we uh, use a special software and we take those digital files and we create uh, essentially a fit verification jig with teeth so we take the files this is a kind of a unique thing that we do really I don't don't know of anybody else doing it we take the files that we use from the surgical prosthetic the digital files and we bring them back into the software and we superimpose them over the iJig scans that you send us and then we manipulate those teeth you know, in this case, uh, the patient had a little bit of a gummy smile. So we would manipulate those teeth and uh, in this case, make them longer and probably adjust the plane of occlusion and move the occlusion, occlusal plane up. And we send this iJig prosthetic to the doctor where it will, it will have some tray adhesive added to the intaglio. It'll be seated and it will be picked up uh, with a reline impression. But before you do a pickup, you'll connect each of these sections with stellar material, stellar acrylic, or a voco, or Duralay, any resin based uh, like your dual cure material. So you connect all the sections just like a fit jig, and then you will perform a reline impression to capture the new tissue levels and you'll capture a bite registration. So these are the records that would come to the lab. Now, because this patient had some aesthetic changes that were needed, I uh, would recommend definitely taking photographs with the eye jig seated. So you can see this is just a replica of what the patient's been wearing um, for the past five or six months. Now with the eye jig 6.0, the the iJig would actually have a reset that's different. This is more of a 5.0 or 4.0, but the iJig 6.0, forgive me, this reset would have already been accomplished. And so the teeth would have been higher, the plane of occlusion is higher, would have been more of an aesthetic seating appointment at this period. Uh, often these cases can even go to final from the iJig. We've gotten so good at making them accurate. But take, take a step back. These are the records that you'll send. Lower and upper iJig sec um, sections all looted together with a reline impression and a bite registration. You can see here, this is how we make a soft tissue model. That's accurate. And photographs. And with these records, we will make what we call the printed try-in, which is a prototype of the final. So these are the prosthetics a patient wore for the past six months. The eye jigs were sent in, uh, looted together, and then we sent a prototype. So we took the eye jig and we moved, um, we moved the teeth into the ideal position. We added uh, acrylic to the intaglio to come down and meet the tissue, and we made these ideal so they're just like a final restoration. And the doctor seated them, tried them in, equilibrated them, performed the reline impression if needed, but usually these are spot on meeting the tissue as you can see here in the in the perimeter of each of the of the image here. So this is a prototype for final and then the next phase is final. And between this image, the printed trying and the final, we adjusted the teeth a little bit more. Uh, but rather, rather than doing another printed try-in uh, um, appointment, 
We went right to final and it was a wonderful result. So this case was completed by Dr. Aaron Quitmeyer, who has completed many Chrome cases and has it down to a very nice routine. And we want to thank him for uh, contributing all of these photographs. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions about Chrome Guided Smile, please contact Rowe Dental Laboratory. Here's our toll-free number and our website, and perhaps you're already watching this video from our website. Uh, but please visit. Our website is geared toward Chrome Guided Smile. There are many educational videos and tutorials and just about everything you want to know about Chrome Guided Smile is on our site. Thank you again.